uh, and it's a machine. So the question came up last week, why don't we just inject too long? And it wraps around like a paper clip. Confusing, but it'll become useful. 
Chronicles shortly. Um, this is a famous picture of Yalta just before the end of World War II, and it just shows some heavyweights here. Uh, got Churchill, we got uh, Will, I'm sorry, FDR, and uh, Joe Stalin here. And so they kind of decide how they're going to carve up the world there. There's three people here. Blasco, the lead author. Um, Greider, who worked in, or worked with Blackburn, the Nobel Prize winner. And um, also DePino, which, who's at now at Harvard, Dana Farber Institute, who published the article on the, the mice and telomerase activation. So these uh, people, 1997, were all present at uh, Cold Springs Harbor and learning about how to engineer mice. So what did they do? They took these mice and they, they knocked out their Turk. Remember, reverse transcriptase is the whole enzyme engine, but RC is just that green key. So they created mice that were deficient. Mom and dad gave them a deficient copy, whatever. They have no ability to make a good key. So they found out that these mice, as they went through generations, got older. The G1 was the first generation of knockouts. The second generation were born younger, I mean older, and with all the damage. The third generation were even worse, and the fourth generation were not even viable. So, unlike uh, the song from Bye Bye Birdie, What's the Matter with Kids These Days, that's, that's the thought you need to, to think about, because look at Larry King over here enjoying his wonderful children. And the point is that Larry King, his his sperm, his germ cells are immortal, and they're darn good. There's good error correction. There's infinite telomerase activity, protected caps. So what they did was to take these mice and make them telomerase incompetent by removing the key. So every generation was worse. You know, we only have the perception as we get older that there's something wrong with kids, but in actuality, they're just as good. Why can't they be like we were, perfect in every way? What's the matter with kids today? <laughs> and um, in this case, the kids of the mice were progressively older and worse. That's kind of a mean thing to do to mice, but it, it proved a point and built the next 14 years of research. So here is what... Um, what that would look like. In this case, look at, let's say the mom is a double knockout mouse, one of these genetically mutated G1 or second generation, no telomerase, getting older mice. You introduce a half normal dad and you mate them and you get, again, knockout. Half the kids are knockout, still not able to grow their telomeres. Half now have recovered one gene from the half healthy dad. These are restored. Okay, knock in mice. So what what they discovered, what Blasco discovered long ago or maybe four years ago was that if you took the bad mice and knocked it back in in the third generation, well look what happens. The normal telomeres are still long. The broken telomeres are still short. But the repaired genes, aha, repaired. Knock in, long telomeres. And good news. Now we're switching gears to TERT. Again, the, 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 it's confusing. Forget the TE part, just look at the RT part, reverse transcriptase, that's the engine. So what Blasco did, and her resume just is a very interesting resume because she basically asks big questions, fundamental questions, and tests them. And, and her career alone, in my opinion, has advanced the understanding of this field uh, more than any other single investigator. And she made a close collaborator with Geron and with TA Sciences. And in fact, was featured last month in a news report picked up by the mainstream media regarding her test for critically short telomeres, which is commercially available in Europe. And the test was being touted as a test to tell you how long you're going to live, which is really not, not the case at all. But they did develop a novel test for measuring short telomeres way back in 2007. And now it's going to be available for people. So the reverse transcriptase enhanced mice. She, she took these mice that were enhanced in terms of their tumor suppression, P53, P16, P19. These are all the, the monitoring and the, the, 
proofreading and the, the, the killing off of the bad genetically damaged cells, these were all very likely, uh, meaning that cells that probably would have had that, that were differentiated, she gave them that ability. And guess what? They live longer and healthier, and they live 40% longer. So it's the combination of having telomerase activity and previously telomerase inactive cells and the high level of error correction that made them all good. There was no increased cancer and the lifespan was increased by 40%. Again, reverse transcriptase, we're not talking about the key anymore, we're talking about the uh, engine. The Harvard mouse study that got a lot of press back in November, December of last year was by DePino, one of those guys that was present at Old Cold Spring. I think he came through, I want to say Denver, UCSF, and now Dana Farber a year or two ago. So he's made a great uh, study here of what happens when you you take these engineered mice. These are not knockout Turk mice, okay? Not like the ones they created in 97. This is knockout for Turk. Something about the reverse transcriptase is defective here in both copies from mom and dad. So they made these, these mice that age fast but they included a lock and key mechanism, meaning they could um, turn it on at will. It was like a latent gene. So they created these mice with a lock, and the key was a tamoxifen derivative or a relative. Not important. It's just a steroid hormone that could activate the telomerase. And what they found, to their surprise, was that the mice got younger, like Benjamin thought. Not only did they not get older, which they were anticipating, just an arrest of aging, but they actually saw youthening, if, if we can coin that word. Uh, the skin, I mean, the pelts got darker. The neurological system measured by, you know, smell and all these other things got younger. And so this was exciting. People said, well, that's neat. That, wouldn't that be great if we could do that with people? Hello, we've been doing that with people since 2007. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what T865 does. Yeah. And that's why I believe and, um, I, um, my patients are... The things they can do with this genetics is something yeah, it's mm. showing that people are getting... They've got these mice, they got one generation, then they altered the gene, and then the next generation was born old. Next generation was born old again, mm. and worse. Next generation was unborn. And they're going to do another one. It's time to do the reverse that. And it gets down to a super mouse that lives 40% longer from an old mouse. It reverses the old mouse back to a young uh, mouse. So that movie about Donald Button, you know, what was his name? Yeah. Button. Yeah. So they've done it with mice and just no problem doing it with you, apparently. <laughs> Tell them this. So how does T65 work? Well, how do we know telomerase is active? It's something called TRAP, uh, which is a telomerase uh, reverse transcriptase activity protocol, I think. It's something like that. It just means you put it in a dish and you see if there's more activity. And the way you know that it's active is that new base pairs are added to the telomeres. This is a um, standard measurement that people do to measure activity. So if you want to know whether yoga or good exercise or sleep increases telomerase activity, you would use a trap assay. So the paper that came out in April by Blasco with the TA scientist folks and, and Cal Harley who's the lead scientist and discoverer of TA65 from Geron showed that at 24 hours at this concentration, TA65 increased telomerase activity in these third generation mice. So now we know, remember, that G3 are the ones that their parents were incompetent. But now, being spliced with a half-normal dad, they have some telomerase activity. And if you could read this, I apologize for the size, it would show positive and negative. It's third generation mice. And this high bar is showing that they have two and a half times the telomerase activity. And that's good. Uh, here's the double negative, G3, without the crossing with the normal um, Half normal dad, there's just no activity there in the telomeres. And, um, and the interesting thing is that also this, uh, this result did not persist at five days. So it's a transient effect. Translates
is to those of you taking TA65, it's not going to be there five days later. Okay, it's only you know for the 24 hours that you're taking it. And I think people go on and off can attest to that. There is a certain immediacy. Um, so what happened in 2011 April was she published these articles on the mice, but she did this just to dot the I's and cross the T's. She already knew what the result would be because she did this experiment in 2007 where she had the knock-in, Turks knock-in mice, and she found that these histograms of the end-to-end -end fusions that we've talked about in the past, you went from this number to none. Okay, it's clearing these bad double chromosomes. End-to-end uh, -end fusions to none. Um, fragments, breaks, still present, but these rings, they went to none. So something about making telomerase active by restoring the key allowed the cell to go through its final apoptosis or killing off of those bad, those damaged uh, chromosomes. So fast forward to 2011, the recent study, she found the same thing here, that signal free number dropped when you added T65, critically short telomeres dropped adding T65. And this is something which is a signal of DNA damage, which would occur if you had, say, oxidative damage or just an uncapped telomere. There's a signal, and this shows that the, that signal was decreased greatly when you're taking T65. Now, the good news is that although the effects of, of reverse transcriptic activity are only dependent upon the time that you're taking it, the repair is permanent. And so we know that because if you look here two years out, and this is three months after treatment, the control group still had a lot of short telomeres, uh, had um, you know broken telomeres, although the treated group, even long after this stuff was out of their system, the T65 group had less. So what's going on there? The only way to explain this is that, in my opinion, the, um, the damaged stem cells, the damaged queen bees, if you will, were kicked out and they were replaced by younger ones. And the copies of the younger cells, you know, this is three months after treatment, they're making better copies of themselves. And that will come into play next week when we talk about weight, diet, and obesity, and how I lost 25 pounds, even, you know, and it's impossible for me to put it back on it's because the same cells are not present. They're less damaged now. They're, they're healthier fat cells. So the point is that aging is an escalator that's going down. And when you take good care, you're able to stand still. If you don't take good care, the speed of the elevator catches up and you start to descend. Uh, but if you exercise, eat well, sleep well, reduce your stress, you run up the escalator, and then you are younger physically kind of like pouring champagne into a tower of champagne glasses. Uh, and this is a big issue with people who maybe will notice an immediate effect, and then they'll say, well, I don't feel anything now. Well, you know what? You're trying to fill the glasses down here. You still have some damage that needs to get taken care of. And so you don't get old overnight. You don't get young overnight either. And that's the thing that a lot of people, dependent upon their psychic makeup, find difficult about taking T65. They feel great initially. Maybe some arthritis goes away. Maybe they lose some weight, but they're like, I don't feel it. I just don't feel it. <laughs> you know, some of the people with the most damage, I remember Chuck was one patient who had really horrible sleep. That sleep improvement didn't kick in until about six or eight weeks because there was so much more in the champagne glass that needed to be fixed. And so every night, you, you only have so many things you can and then you wake up and you go at it again, damaged. And so it's a cumulative, gradual process of repair. But interestingly, they, although there are mechanisms to repair DNA... They're doing it already. Um, which we can get into it's someday. <clears throat> Probably the main way T65 is working is by allowing them to be destroyed, break the champagne glasses that aren't working, and, be, um, and recruit ones that are going to be younger and healthier. And we've discussed yeah, that the point, uh, the it's called the mesenchymal stem the cell the um, yeah. recruitment, and that's, that's, that's a different podcast, which I'll refer to in the exactly. So that's it.
short one today. Um, if anybody has questions, yeah, I'm talking about Abel. I'm happy to entertain hmm. those. Because obviously, I've got it. Ah, question. Can't fire. It seems that TA65 is really better. Still dependent upon the salt. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. I don't know. Doesn't seem that way. I know people who have got off it after starting TA65, and I know people who remain on it. I think they're different, but perhaps complementary. Uh, of course, HCH can be overdone. It can be supercharging, so I'm not a big fan of that. Ralph asks, with the replacements from the better stem cells, does the number of stem cells increase again? But think of it like this. You only have a certain number of queen bees per hive. So if there's a queen there and she is damaged, she'll often go into a state of, um, she can't copy because the DNA watchman, the P53, is keeping her from copying, but she's still doing her job. She's kind of phoning it in. She's kind of like a 63-year-old uh, middle management person in state government. She just wants to phone it in. She's not really at 100%. So what happens is um, if you, and they don't promote from within, the drones usually don't de-differentiate, although that happens in muscle cells and satellite cells, as we discussed in podcast 11. What happens is there's a vacancy, and then these itinerant um, stem cells, these mesenchymal stem cells that are ready to go, they, they're, they're college-educated, they're smart, they can do this job, that, or the other, they come in and become the new queen bee in whatever niche that is. So anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a concept of stoichiometry. Somehow cells signal each other to know that there's enough people here. We don't need anybody new, no new guys, and we already got a boss, okay? And so what you need to do is kill off the bad cells in that niche. Usually there's only one less differentiated stem cell that replenishes all the ones drones around her with her bad or old DNA. So I hope that kind of answers your, your question. Okay. David from Manhattan Beach asks, um, what about menopause? Does the loss of estrogen create special problems for women? Um, yes, it does. Um, unlike andropause, which is a made-up thing, uh, not recognized by the World Health Organization, uh, women about the age of 50 run into a wall called menopause, and their ovaries really stop functioning uh, to produce hormones. They still have hormones from the adrenal gland, uh, which can be converted into all the different steroid hormones, such as um, testosterone, estrogen. Uh, but it drops pretty much precipitously. The upshot of which is decreased bone density, decreased energy, sometimes the, uh, the mood, especially during the transition, is, is poor. Hair quality, skin, nair, nail, hair, um, especially in the sensitive tissues below the waist, it can lead to incontinence and uh, dryness, etc. So, Kent is on, but we only hear his radio. Yep. Okay. Uh, question from Kenneth. In the TA65 supplement, do you continue to take it for life, or is there a specific time frame that you take it and then stop? Excellent question. Um, well, as we discussed here, the repair is permanent. So these mice were treated, weren't taking it anymore, so there was the trap assay was no different. They weren't getting any benefit. And yet, you measure their telomeres, they continue to have fewer short, critically damaged telomeres. So the question is, do you continue to take it? Well, I would, and I do plan to, because uh, as long as you're still using the car, driving it, taking it out, it's still getting old. So why not reverse or, you know, stop that aging process? Uh, you know, it's a matter of finances, but, you know, 20 years from now, I'm sure Monsanto will be engineered, will have engineered corn to produce high yields of this substance. And, um, you know, it'll just be a political issue uh, whether people will be entitled to stay young. I mean, it raises huge social questions. Although, in reality, the Medicare problem would be 
solved, but you have a lot of unemployed doctors and insurance salesmen. So anyway, this is way above my pay grade, but um, certainly whether they're deserving or not, most well, people could benefit maybe, from a healthier maybe. lifestyle while they're here. And um, uh -huh. definitely uh -huh. something I would consider taking, Let me get definitely. Whatever. Rest never sleeps, as you know, that you know, said, so you're always resting, okay. you're always oxidizing, and, and you're always aging, so why not continue taking well, let me, let me get something, let me spring before we go and start painting that. Uh, Don Wright, okay. if I cut myself yeah, shaving while well, I heal, with a small I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute, I'll, I'll take this out so Yah can hear too. He 